All right, let's the talk basics the basics of Half-Life. Half-Life, here, Half-Life here. Uh, is the average time that it takes for about half of a large group of particles to decay um, that are radioactive. So if you have a group of particles that are radioactive, uh, they, they decay, if you have a large enough group, at a very, very set rate that actually, if your group is large enough, can be very, very precise. Notice the term average, though, here, and notice a large group. A uh, statement that you need to remember is radiation is random and spontaneous. We cannot predict when a single radioactive isotope will decay no more than we can predict with any certainty whether flipping a quarter uh, in the air will cause it to land on heads or tails at that exact moment. It's completely random. but. If you flip a quarter over and over and over and over again and increase your sample size, notice large group, then if you record that down, you're going to get closer and closer and closer, the larger your sample size is, to 50%. Now, that exact same concept uh, applies with half-life, the average time it takes for uh, about half of a large group of particles to decay. And if you were to graph that out, like over here I have a graph with number of particles remaining on the y-axis and time and days on the x-axis. This is going to be iodine-131, the, the thing that we're going to do our example problem about here momentarily. Uh, and we start out with 100% uh, of however many particles it is of this large sample size. After one half-life, which is eight days, we've reduced down to 50 after two half-lives, that would be 16. If the half-life is eight days, then two half-lives would be 16 days. So after I go another half-life, another eight days, I'm down to 50 and a half, 25%. After a half-life beyond that, going from 16 to 24, another eight days, I would be down to 12.5, so forth and so on. So this is going to actually be exponential decay. Now, here's the equation for half-life. In this video, we're not going to go over using that equation, though. Uh, by the way, also, half-life works not just with number of particles remaining, but it also works with mass. It works with activity level or how radioactive the substance is, no matter the units. It works with number of particles, et cetera, et cetera. Now, before we even get started into our example problem, let, let me point out that you could actually determine the half-life of a substance using a graph like this one over here without knowing anything uh, with the, about the equation. Uh, simply look at uh, how long in time it takes to go from whatever the starting quantity is to half of that. That length of time is going to be your half-life. Now, of course, these graphs don't have to have nice little dots at the half-lives uh, specifically, and they don't have to have numbers specifically at the half-life, but it is very easy to determine off of a graph the half-life if you just simply see how long it takes for the, the initial quantity to get cut in half. Let's take a look at our, at our example problem now. I have some iodine-131. It has a half-life of eight days. Uh, and it's actually something that's used to treat thyroid cancer. Um, and so a, a patient uh, ingests, they swallow a pill, um, and, and, and the way that uh, iodine-131 works is it ends up being absorbed mostly in the thyroid um, to, to try to kill off whatever cancer is there. Um, th this patient received a 60 millicurry, that would be a unit for activity level or radiation, uh, 60 millicurry dose. Uh, and I want to know how many days will it take before the activity level drops all the way down to somewhere below 5 millicurry? Uh, because uh, for a while, that person's actually radioactive, and you actually don't necessarily want to be around them uh, for a little while. Now, in solving all of these problems, instead of using our equation here, uh, if you're actually working off of a number of half-lives, which is what we're going to do, we can just set up a simple table. So set up your table to where you've got number of half-lives in the first column, time in the second column, and then whatever you're actually going to measure by, whether it's activity level, right, or, or, or number of particles, or mass, whatever it is that we're going to, in essence, cut in half, put that, put that into the last column. Make your first entry in your table to be your initial conditions. At zero half-lives, no time has passed, my activity level is 60 millicure. Uh, Curie. Then after one half-life has passed, that's going to be eight days, so then I'm going to cut my activity in half. And then I'm going to continue this pattern. Two half-lives, that is 16 days, and so in the half-lives column, uh, you're going to simply count up 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In the time column, you're going to count up by the number of half-lives. And then in your activity level or, or mass or whatever it is, you're just going to keep cutting things in half. So this will be 15 millicurie um, after three half-lives. Now I am up to uh, 24. Uh, that's going to be 7.5, four half-lives. That's 32, and all these are in days, right? If I actually need to, uh, it would be best to put my units on those. Um, now, now I'm actually uh, down to 7.5. Cut in half is going to be 3.75 3 here, uh, millicurie. Um, and so I know uh, to answer this question, a patient receives how many days will it take before the activity level is below 5 millicurie? Uh, even, even if I don't use the equation, which we're not going to use the full equation right now, I know that it's going to, we need, we need to wait at least 32 days would end up being my final answer there. W wait at least 32 days, um, and then we know that our activity level is below 5 millicurie. All right, and so that, that's kind of how all of these problems end up going. Use this idea of a table for all of these basic ones where we don't end up needing to use the equation. Use this idea of a table um, and, and do number of half-lives in the first column, time, where you're going to count up by whatever the half-life is, um, in the second column, and then your uh, activity level or mass that you're going to end up cutting in half with each half-life. Something to point out in case you need to uh, think about it this way. Uh, the, the time is just going to be whatever the number of half-lives is times the half-life. So three times eight gave me gave me 24. And if you set up a table like that, then you can actually end up solving a, a lot of different problems uh, where maybe they give you instead of uh, the initial activity level, they actually have you solve for the initial activity level and they give you other things. Um, you, you can end up solving around just using a table for many different uh, different concepts. All right, one last parting thought for you here. Uh, now, a common misconception that students end up running into is they end up thinking that as a object decays, as a radioactive um, object composed of radioactive particles um, ends up decaying, that it actually loses mass, that it actually goes away, that it like violates the law of conservation of matter. And that's just not true. Uh, the radioactive particle, every time a radioactive particle decays, it decays into a stable particle. So let me, let me use my graph up here. Uh, I've labeled the blue line radioactive. If I were to draw out a curve for um, the stable particles, it, it would look it would look something like this. It would intersect here, right? Because that's at the 50 spot, um, and, and then and then it would start to flatten out as we approached 100. It, it would kind of be the opposite of. Um, it would kind of be the opposite of the radioactive particle because you don't end up losing any. Uh, you don't end up losing actually any particles there. They just change. Uh, they change forms from something that's radioactive. They decay into another another type of isotope that is more stable. And at any point in time, you can add your two together and get back to 100%. So here, 50 plus 50 gets me back to 100. Here, 25 plus this point would be 75 gets me back to 100%. Same thing with masses. The, ma the total mass remains the same. Um, the, the total number of particles remains the same. And, and, and the total percentage ends up remaining the same too. Just because you go through radioactive decay doesn't mean that the law of conservation of matter or conservation of mass ends up being defied.